Welcome to this evening's episode 49 of our Facebook uh, Q&A. And uh, last couple of weeks, or last week, we were doing an interview with John Melton. And uh, thanks, John, for joining us on Facebook. It was really great to talk about uh, program management and uh, particularly working with organisations, some of the little nuggets of information. We had some great feedback on this week that would I think would help companies who are in this game working with uh, vendors, how to manage their, their vendor partner relationships better. So thanks for that insight, John. Um, if you've got any questions and you wanted to ask us any questions on Facebook, um, just go onto our website, vineresources.com. You can send us a question in our chat box. We've got an ch instant chat on the website and we'll answer some of those questions. But this week, we wanted to bring another guest on who we wanted to introduce you to. Um, his name's Andy Lebron. We'll bring Andy on in a moment. He's gonna join us via Skype video. Um, Andy's been working in change management for a good part of uh, 10 years now, or seven, seven or eight years, um, and uh, worked with a lot, number of organizations helping them implement change. And I really wanted to bring Andy in because um, Andy's been contracting for a long time. He's very knowledgeable about the industry. He um, has worked with a lot of different organizations in managing their change. And I thought it'd be great to just ask Andy a few questions that we can share with our audience. So I'm gonna grab Andy on the call now, and hopefully the technology works today, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a chat with him. So let's get that going. Right. And I will turn my phone down so my phone doesn't ring. There's one thing I forget. Right, here we go. Andy. Hey, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Not at all. Thank you very much for, uh, for giving the opportunity. Appreciate it. Thank you. You are more than welcome. And, you know, by the way, first of all, it's, it's uh, thanks for being brave and coming on to, to Facebook Live. So yes. it's, uh, uh, and for, if you're watching this later on, on LinkedIn, Andy's very kindly offered to share some of his insight and wisdom in change management. Uh, so this is completely unscripted. We've, uh, we just want to chat about it. So Andy, can, do you mind me asking if, uh, just to introduce you to our audience and our, our listeners and viewers. Yes. Tell me, tell me a little bit about what change management is. Yes, certainly. Um, for me, change management is very much more around the implementation. It's actually more about embedding something correctly. Um, project manager, I've done both. I've been a project manager and a business change manager. Uh, as a project manager, it's much more around um, the installation of something. So it's almost like a, a widget versus the people side. And, and people talk about softer skills, but it's it's a lot more than that. It's it really is much more about building trust and, and you know that honesty and integrity and everything else is a huge part of it. And I think organisations are getting much more aware of, of the importance of it now, much more so than they have been previously. They're still seen as a little bit pink and fluffy to some extent. Yeah, um, but it is it's so so important. And of course, you've got lots of different parts of that change within an organisation, from the the, 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 the the processes, the technology, but most importantly, generally the the people um, yes. and, and getting their buy in and support and coaching them through that change. What what, what often is the the biggest? There you go. I've got a call now. Uh, what <laughs> what often is the biggest challenges that you often face um, when? Uh, working on uh, on change uh, programs for companies. Yeah, of course. Um, certainly, the organisations that I've worked for previously is very much around um, the cultural and behavioural issues. So, you know, people have worked within organisations for many, many years. Um, they're certain, you know, they they used to their ways of working, and people generally just don't really like change. Um, you know, change is a bit of pain. Uh, or it can be, unless people really understand what's in it for them, change can be seen as being painful, and people just want to move away from that and move to something that they, they'd much rather do. Mm -hmm. So unless you really get to understand and help them to understand what's in it for them, um, you know, that, that's always going to be the biggest issue, really. So that, that, so that deeply ingrained cultural and behavioural issues can, can be a bit of a challenge. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, Dave, as well, is that, that really good leadership that change leadership so uh, someone very vocal within the organization that's that's really keen to uh, to promote something and, and actually you know spend time and invest and actually be very vocal in that change i think that's a huge part of it as well um you know organizational readiness these sort of things we talk about lots of different stuff really but they're, they're the sort of key issues really having someone who's vocal and getting that middle management that that 
that supervisory support is a huge part of it as well. So whenever I've been involved in any sort of change program, really trying to win the hearts and minds and get the supervisor to understand um, those that are managing the frontline teams, getting them to understand why it's happening, what it is that's happening, and, and how to really um, to promote it, and how you know what is in it for them is, is a huge part of it. That by what, just talking about, I mean, obviously, and Andy, I know you're a contractor as well. You've been working with many different organisations across industry within change. What, out of interest, I mean, why do companies tend, and just for our viewers, why do companies tend to bring in someone perhaps on a contract basis rather than use their in-house permanent resources for change projects or, or could potentially do that? Yeah, I think it's a really good question. And why would people do that? Um, a, a huge part of that, Dave, is very much around the uh, understanding the skills and uh, the knowledge and experience that you brought in from other organisations. So it's quite easy to be fixed in a certain mindset. You know your organisation very, very well, but you don't know. So my background is probably public sector, and, and prior to becoming project manager in business change, I was in policing. And so, you know, resilience of being able to deal with, uh, you know, challenging stakeholders, these are all things that. Um, that I'm, I'm used to doing and, and people from outside an organization can come in with a slightly different mindset mm -hmm. and and just look at something with fresh pair of eyes mm -hmm. absolutely what does that first hundred days then look like in, in a in a change program I get I guess obviously it depends on the scar size and the stakeholders involved but what does it typically look like yeah, that, that first part is very much around getting to know your team. So getting to know the strengths of your team. And, and the first thing is very much around information gathering. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to find as much information as you possibly can, as quickly as you can. Um, working out the, you know, what is actually in it for them? What is uh, the reason for the change? Mm -hmm. um, and I say it's, it's very much around that, uh, the risks, uh, what are the benefits, the disbenefits of doing this program? Mm -hmm. um, Understanding your stakeholders, what stakeholder analysis has been done. So really getting to grips with, um, you know, with if you were the key players, how do you shift people's mindset to, to get into the right frame of mind to actually uh, encourage the change? Mm -hmm. um, you know, where does business change fit within the program? So you know, what are the key deliverables that need to be, um, to be need to be in place and need to work with the milestones of the program as well? And there, there can sometimes be a little bit of conflict there. Yeah. There can be a bit of conflict between you know the program and uh, and business change activities because you know the business change manager and people working alongside really understand where the rub is, where really understand where the blockers are, and trying to sometimes get that over. And there can be a bit of a clash between the program milestones and whether an organisation is actually ready to to deliver on time and, and really get that successful embedment. Now I've I've been to quite a few change management networking events myself. One thing I love about change management networks is people tend to be quite extrovert and they, because obviously they need to have strong communication skills, not afraid to ask people questions, get involved. What are, what are, the, what are the attributes that you see that make uh, someone successful in change management? Yeah, that's the question. The like, relatability, I think being able to get on with people, yeah. or being able to understand how people tick, yeah. what makes people tick. Um, you know, those people skills that are, and this is why I seeing as a bit of a softer skill, really, those softer skills that people talk about with change management, why it's a little bit pink and fluffy, because rather than just delivering something, mm -hmm. it's delivering a whole behavioral change potentially and new ways of working. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the key things, though, I think as well as those softer skills, mm -hmm. it's, it's being able to tie those in and work closely with the program team and understand you know exactly what the requirements are from the program team so it's not just being seen as being you know nice people who get on well with people it's actually really about okay let's go in here and find out exactly how do we measure this so what is the change what can we do to measure it because you'll have some people that uh, are willing to go with the change and will really enjoy it you'll have other people who will be a bit passive not really sure and you'll have other people who are actively resistant now those people who are actively resistant it may be because Really, there's, there's only two reasons. Generally speaking, it'll be because they don't know what to do, or they don't know. Uh, sorry, they don't want to do it. So they're sort of the key, the key issues really. And if you can deal with those, so you can either train people up and help them to understand what it is that needs to do, um, uh, or you know, it could be that people eventually vote with their feet and they say that you know this isn't 
what I want to do. This isn't part of the organisation I want to be part of. And I say, you don't want that to happen. But ultimately, people have that choice. So, you know, you bring in people, you've got the hearts and minds, you've got people who are willing to do it. Those are a little bit passive that you can hopefully try and move, you know, one way or the other. Those that are very resistant, you either train, change their mind, get them actively involved, be, so they actually become part of the solution as well. Um, you know, all those key things, really, really important things with regards to business change. Okay. Often or not, um, when change programs come about, there's obviously some people that perhaps, or vend- I, I, I mentioned vendors, because some of those legacy vendors, if, it, if there's software involved particularly, maybe on their way out the door, mm-hmm. of course, who may have had relationships and, and licensing relations with that organisation for many years. How do you keep them engaged within that change program when perhaps they are, are, are being shifted out of that organisation? Yeah, very difficult. There, there can, uh, may well be that there's, uh, you know, KPIs, that you have to get KPIs involved and, yeah. um, uh, you know, some real measurable, um, you know, it, it is unfortunately that carrot stick type thing where, you know, you can either encourage people to, to go with it, you know, they've signed a contract, they have to deliver and therefore you keep pushing, pushing, pushing and working with them. Mm-hmm. Um, but ultimately, there've got to be those those KPIs as well. And I said earlier, you know, there has to be there has to be some way of measuring. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, for any any change to become successful, particularly when you're working with people who like say who like maybe being made redundant or as a new organisation coming in, whatever it may be, um, you have to be able to measure it. You know, those benefits have to be obvious as well, mm-hmm. and they have to be obvious to those people who are working inside the organisation or, or outside as well. And so, you know, those contractors, those people who work using that software solution, potentially, you know, it needs to be obvious to them and us and people, our customers, effectively, that um, you know these are the benefits to to this solution. And um, you know, the other thing as well with with keeping people engaged is momentum as well. You have to have that momentum. You've got to keep people going. There has to be an if you've got something that's dragging on for ages and ages and people are stalling, and this can sometimes be a bit of a tactic that I've found as well, a bit of a challenge with some programs, is that you get people saying, well, I can't possibly do any change until I get this information. And, you know, it can be a bit of a stalling tactic as well. So I think those three things, you know, being able to measure, being able to understand and, and articulate very easily what the benefits are. Yeah. Um, and also then to, to create that momentum and build that momentum are hugely important. Fantastic. And I've got a final one for you. Uh, when the change has been made, there's a bit of celebration, you know, a bit of a celebration, hopefully, depending on the size and scope of the program. Yeah. How do you keep that organisation engaged in that change, uh, particularly when perhaps some of that target group have gone off and they're onto something else? Yeah, yeah. This is quite challenging. And I've certainly found this in, in, uh, in a number of organisations that I've worked for. Um, you can do simple things like dip sampling, so management going out and ensuring the new ways of working are, are being adhered to. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, I mentioned KPIs earlier, so if you've got some way of compliance and insurance measures, that's hugely important as well. Um, I think engaging, something I've found as well a few times is that actually the, the, the business change teams can be withdrawn a little bit too quickly. Mm-hmm. So we can't actually go out and speak to people. I think it's really important to be able to go and spend time. But once the new changes have taken place and you've gone past the go live date, yeah, you know, go and sit in the canteens with these people. These, these, you know, whoever it is has, has, has to change. Yeah, go sit with them. What are the problems you're encountering? You know, what can be done? So these post implementation reviews, a lot of time, lip service is paid to these. Unfortunately, these are vitally important. And then someone actually takes ownership of these post implementation reviews. It can be a bit of a tick box. Yeah. But the hugely important thing is these PIRs to make sure they're actually take place. And with it alongside, you know, compliance insurance, KPIs, um, you know, you can do surveys as well. If it's remote, you can get surveys done and things. And, and you know, it, it's hopefully you've built that relationship and, and you've built the trust and, and know that you're reporting honestly. And so, you know, again, it's just huge, huge important. Andy, thank you so much for that insight. I'm not going to throw any more questions out at you. And I know I put you on the spot a bit there. So... Absolutely. Thank you for being so honest with your answers as well. Um, we'll we'll catch up in a in a couple of days, I'm sure. And uh, obviously, I know you've been contracting for a long time, so you know the market very well. Um, have a great evening. And, uh, we'll, we'll, and again, thanks for joining us on the live show. We'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you. Cheers. Okay. Fantastic. That was great. That was uh, Andy LeBron. He joined us as a change manager.
It's so good to hear some of his uh, insight, particularly how organizations can uh, keep keep momentum of that change once that change is implemented. And you often see this, I mean, for any project or any program, of course, you need someone to, who still is owning that program and keeping that with you. So we'd love to, well, lo we'd love to get your thoughts on it anyway. So hope you enjoyed uh, uh, our new format of our Facebook Q&A show. It was great to hear some commentary from Andy. My name's David Lawrence. Um, if you would like to post some questions to us, just go on our website at vineresources.com. If you want to watch any of our videos, we've got them all live on Facebook Live. You can just go back through them and shortly they'll be all on our website and our resource hub as well. So hope you have a good evening for a Monday. It's a big week in the UK with the Brexit stuff going on. Who knows what will happen? All I would say is in my little world, I've just got to keep plugging on and hopefully for you too. So have a nice evening. We'll see you soon.